we have um, Musa Saeed and Nicholas Brockman from Valve of Sands here with us today for a little interview. Um, to start off, for each of you guys, what led you to filmmaking? Sure, I'll go first. Um, so I'm Nicholas Bruckman, the producer of Valley of Saints, and I've been making films really since I was a little kid. I think even when I was seven or eight years old, I would borrow my mom's video camera that she took on, you know, when we were going office tours somewhere, and I would be shooting whatever I could with it. I remember editing with two VHS decks before, you know, I had access to any kind of filmmaking equipment and making experimental short films and music videos for songs I liked. But then I think after around September 11th, I think I became very interested in how film could be used as a medium of bringing people together, of helping cultures understand each other. And since then, I think I've dedicated most of my filmmaking work to exploring how film can be used to break down barriers between people, whether like physical borders or cultural borders, um, and humanize other cultures so we don't uh, hate each other so much. Uh, yeah, for me similarly, I think I uh, made films from an early age, uh, and I was mostly at first just drawn to like special effects and camera tricks and that kind of thing, and just you know making stupid little sci-fi movies and things like that. But <clears throat> I think you know I, at the time there were a lot of movies you know that had people that looked like me that were not very positive uh, portrayals of people that looked like me, and so I wanted to make films that spoke to my experience in a different way or spoke to experience of my community in a different way and uh, you know thought that you know this medium which I had just thought of as being you know uh, something fun that it could you know be meaningful and open up doors uh, and, and uh, channels of communication between people so I think that's what led me to filmmaking. I happen to know that uh, both of your parents are immigrants in the United States and can you share a little bit of um, their immigration story as well as yours and how did those stories affect your work? Should I go first? Sure. Sure, well, so I was born in, in the UK and uh, my, my father's parents were Eastern European Jews who fled Europe right before the Holocaust. Uh, my grandmother was from Danzig and she left just a few weeks before um, Hitler invaded. And on my uh, mother's side, her father was born in Calcutta in India and he was blind. He was a professor who taught at Columbia University and came to the United States in the 30s. And I think for both of my sides of my family, America or the experience of coming to the United States is what allowed them not just to flourish but really just to survive because there were no opportunities for the blind in India and of course there was no opportunity so to speak for Jews in, in Europe at the time and so I really believe um, you know in the United States as being a haven for immigrants and very pro-immigration in general and I think for me as an artist my work has always been about exploring other cultures and making people more welcoming to the other that lived in our midst. Uh, my parents were both born in Kashmir and uh, they were professors there and my father was part of sort of an earlier uh, independence movement um, and was a political prisoner there and that was part of the reason why he eventually left Kashmir and uh, I think you know when he came to America having come from a place that was uh, so diverse and pluralistic and how that changed with the conflict uh, he was really interested to be in a place that again that was very diverse and has sort of devoted his life to building, you know, uh, bridges between communities, especially interfaith relations. Um, and so it really provided him an opportunity to, to do that kind of work that he couldn't do in Kashmir. Um, and, and I think that's also given me a sense of, you know, openness and uh, ability to connect to different cultures and feel like I have access to different uh, worlds. And I think that strengthens my voice as a filmmaker. Before we go into questions about a film, could one of you, in two or three sentences, summarize what the premise of Valley of Sands is? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Are you at this part? You're not even editing. Um, uh, Valley of Saints is a love story set in Kashmir, um, and it tells the story of a young boatman who wants to run away from his home until he finds himself trapped by a military curfew and protest that erupts in his home. And when he's trapped back in his homeland, he meets a young girl who's a scientist studying 
the lake. She's from America, and he becomes her guide on the lake and falls in love with her as he shows her his home and she shows him her perspective on how to change things for the better. Uh, Musa, since you wrote the script, um... Do a better job. <laughs> 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 um, uh, since the film is set in such a conflict zone yeah. in South Asia where um, the political situation is very complicated as well as the religious and spiritual aspect of it, um, what made you want to focus the film more on friendship and love story rather than the political or religious side of the um, I think uh, what people might know about Kashmir, if they know anything about it at all, is about the politics and about the conflict. Um, those are things that people might have been exposed to, images of violence. But I think, you know, it's hard for people a lot of times, especially in the West, to understand that people continue their daily lives even amidst this conflict. And I think uh, being able to see how other people are living under these circumstances uh, Makes makes the connection between uh, makes the connection between them stronger than just understanding the politics because the politics are hard to understand as it is and so being able to connect in a more human way was important for me so I focused more on you know romance and friendship and you know even the environment um, as as topics uh, that I wanted to focus on because um, I felt like it would be an easier entry point for most people and it would make it more human and universal rather than just political. And Nick, uh, was it your first time in Kashmir? No, it wasn't. I, I have traveled to Kashmir many times as a kid. My mother's family is in Calcutta, and so we would visit Kashmir as tourists. And I had made a short documentary film in Kashmir um, for my senior thesis film when I was in, in, an undergraduate student. And subsequently, I met Musa um, at a film screening of one of his previous films. And I um, discussed, he's, he mentioned it during his Q&A that he was from Kashmir, his family was from Kashmir. And I went up to him afterwards and said, oh, I made a short film there as a student. And he said, oh, you know, I've always wanted to make a film there. Um, and I've been working on this project for a while. And I think about a year later, he had the script ready. And I read it and really fell in love with it, especially what he was talking about of exploring the environment and a love story as a way of talking about the bigger things that are happening in Kashmir and so right away I said hey let's make this movie together let me know how I can help and that's how we started the relationship we have now. And uh, what was the most challenging things about producing, directing um, <laughs> and making a film in Kashmir and I know that you guys were filming with a very small crew can you also right. talk a bit about that? <clears throat> well the 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 situation in Kashmir is still sort of unstable and uncertain um, from day to day or year to year. Things can change uh, dramatically. So uh, I think just learning to let go a little bit and uh, adapt to the circumstances was a big challenge. Um, but once we were able to do that, it, it made things, you know, sort of easier to deal with. Uh, you know, before we went into production, there was an actual military curfew, which limited our um, access to resources, limited our mobility, um, and in general just, you know, had this sort of fear hanging over the production at different times. So we had to, you know, learn to adapt to that and to deal with it the way that Kashmiris do on a daily basis. And so, uh, you know, learning to um, not have to, you know, be married to a certain plan, but to be able to uh, you know, plan locations from day to day based on what is open and available to us, or uh, cast which actors are available to us, or you know, um, you know, write scenes around the actual political things that are happening around us. Um, so it was a very adaptive process that I think made the film very authentic to the time and place that we shot in. I think a lot of people are amazed that we were able to make this film under the circumstances and with the size of the crew and size of the budget we had, and I attribute that mostly to Musa and Yoni, the cinematographer, and my experience making documentary films, because even though this was a, a completely fiction scripted film, we really worked with every real aspect of what was going on there, would rewrite stories around certain locations and how they might work in that location, and actually write jokes and write narratives around people's real personalities. And so I think that 
was how Musa was able to get these amazing performances out of non-professional actors. Gulzar is an actual boatman on Dal Lake. Two different questions regarding what you were talking about. Since you mentioned casting, can you elaborate a little more about how you decide to use first-time <laughs> actors instead of professional actors? Right. Uh, I think um, <clears throat> A big part of what I wanted to do is make a very sort of naturalistic film, something that felt very authentic and real and immediate, uh, so that people that would know that the things that we're showing in the film are actually happening, um, that the political situation is as it is, the environmental situation is as it is uh, represented in the film. Um, so, so I wanted to cast, you know, non-professionals, people who would give the sen give the film a sense of realism, and so. Uh, the main character was always supposed to be a boatman, and so I just visited these different uh, docks and boat stands around the around Dal Lake in Kashmir, looking for someone who I could, you know, base the story around and do research with, but then also cast in the film. And so I met Gulzar, the star of the film, a year before we went into production during this research trip, and uh, I just, you know, became very good friends with him, and we were able to communicate very openly. Uh, we built a lot of trust, and through that process, then I wrote the film sort of around him and, and made the character reflect his experiences, so that he could not really have to act as someone else, but could really be himself in the in the film. And, and I think that uh, the, our, our relationship, and then being able to mold the film around him, really uh, gave him freedom to you know be himself. And 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 I think that brings audiences in, and and the performance makes uh, and it makes the performance so much. Uh, so, so compelling and believable. And if you say the crew was small, so how many people were actually Sure, there? well just three of us went from the U.S. Um, Musa, Yoni the cinematographer, and I went both as the producer and the sound recordist, um, which was really crazy, you know, because obviously on any film set of any size, you don't want the producer being busy holding the boom pole, you know, especially on boats, which is really challenging. Um, the, the reason we did that was because things had really flared up in terms of the political instability there in the weeks before we went. And initially we had thought to bring a larger crew, but we realized the only safe way to do it was to really be under the radar. So the cameras we used were these um, Canon 7D cameras, similar to the ones you're shooting us with now. And we were able to go into locations completely broken down, look like tourists, and film whole scenes without anybody noticing what we were doing. So it was kind of the only way we could do it. One thing that was really helpful, though, was that we were really able to bring a lot of people into the com in the community in as filmmakers. So a lot of the times we would have, you know, our production assistants would be kids from the neighborhood where Gulzar lived, and we'd teach them how to hold a reflector, or we'd teach them how to, uh, you know, use the slate board and every other role. So we really tried to get the community involved in making the film, and they had a lot of fun with it, especially because there's not much going on, especially in times of curfew and strikes like when we were there. Um, what, to end the interview, what was your favorite moment in the shoot, during the shoot, and also in the film? Uh, <clears throat> I think, I mean, the whole, the whole shoot, I guess, was <laughs> my favorite part. If that's not too, uh, if that's not too easy way out of the that's, question, that's too easy of a way. Out. Uh, <laughs> um, I well, actually, I mean, I think even. I think my, my favorite part was really actually even before the shoot was the research part of it when I got to really know Gulzar and spend time with him uh, on my own and, and develop that relationship because for me that's really what filmmaking is about is about being able to you know jump into new worlds um, you know sort of without knowing too much about the place and then get immersed in this world and get to know it deeply and intimately and then uh, you know and build those relationships so I think that period of research when I was just starting to get to know Gulzar was really sort of in the whole process was really my favorite favorite part. My, I think my favorite moment was when we got when I got back to New York and plugged in the hard drive and saw that all the footage was there <laughs> because so many things could have gone wrong on this shoot. We had to deal with um, you know corruption from the authorities, we had to deal with protesters that didn't like what we were doing, we had to deal with conservative forces in the society that didn't think it was appropriate for us to be making a film or talking about the environment or whatever it was. So we um, had a lot of war stories, a lot of scary moments um, where we had to break rules ourselves the way the characters do in order to accomplish the scene. Um, and you know, there were many days where I thought, or many moments where I thought, 
oh my god, we're about to have all of our footage confiscated and the two years we've been developing this film is going to be for naught. So knowing we got it home was incredible. And I think in the distribution of the film, obviously it premi uh, premiering at Sundance was a huge accomplishment for us. You know, I think all American independent filmmakers dream of that. Winning the Audience Award was insane and it was just this magical moment. But even better than that was when we got to bring Afzal and Gulzar to the Hamburg Film Festival just a few weeks ago for the opening night and we had a huge gala presentation. Neither of them had ever been outside of, of Kashmir before and they just loved every minute of it and it was a tremendous opportunity for us to give back to them because as we were saying they've done so much to help us make the film. Thank you so much guys and for our friends in New York, Bali of Sand is going to be screened in New York at the end of this month. Um, where is the location sure. again? O October 30th. At, uh, it's the closing night film of the South Asian International Film Festival. Uh, it'll be at the SVA Auditorium October 30th, I think at 6 o'clock. And it will be in theaters in New York in 2013, if you miss it then. You can uh, find out more at our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash VOSfilm. Great. So check it out. It's a beautiful film. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.